Hello everybody, um, this is Howie Culture at foodforestpermaculture.com and this is early spring and we're going to walk down the stairs to the food forest and we're going to have a look at the soil bank. This is a strawberry bed that was just put in from your soil bank and a few herbs here and there and but the soil was taken out of the, the soil bank and spread out in the garden and here's the pathway where you put your greens your your coffee grounds your bark mulch over the winter and then you bring it out of your pathway and here it is here all along here and here's a small nursery of goji and apple and here's your pathway that's been emptied onto the garden the forest garden and along we go, here we go, and here's some more plums and gojis. And over here we have the soil bank, and the soil comes out of here after building it up, and you're putting in layers of green and compost, kitchen waste, your wood ash from the wood stove, and uh, we're just gonna go look along and this is what it looks like prior to any of the, the large amount of leaf foliage that comes out so you get to really see what it looks like after the chop and drop everything's been chopped and dropped and then your soil is put out of the pathway on top of the chop and drop and this is a sugar plum tree we're going to go around it. Here we go. And we're going to go back through. Here we go. And this is some gojis, some gooseberries, some currants. And again, this is we're going to this a mulberry tree. It's really nice to get mulberries. Moving along, this is a dead tree I planted for the birds. This is a goji plant I made, a clone. And there's a, there's some comfrey and some blueberry bushes, and some more comfrey, the green you'll see. And over here, this is a sugar plum. Uh, yep. And these white sheet, you see, this is remade, covering the. The lemon trees in Satsuma, they're just one and two years old now. This is a bed of kale and cinnamon wasabi and and uh, just different greens. Just put out early, early spring. Yeah, and there's some kale from last year that's doing really well. And here's some Camby's Lovage. Nice stuff, very bitter, great for the liver. And here's some kale, walking stick kale. Makes a nice walking stick. And some mirrors to give it a little extra heat. And this is a bed of garlic planted up through here. They're not quite up yet, can't see them. And there's some different uh, lettuce growing in there and radishes and beets all over I just throw my seed all over after I collect it and rake it in in the early spring I do what's called a gorilla grow it's a system that uh, my grandfather did so that's what I do and here is the bed for the for uh, for the oka artichokes and the Dongjing artichoke, Chinese artichoke, and a Canadian artichoke. And here's a remade covering my, oh, we're over here at the greenhouse. Looks like we're gonna go and have a look inside. This is an orangery I built out of recycled glass and wood. And in here we, we've just started making things. We made 75 fig trees of three different varieties. And these are all citrus, lemons, limes, that sort of thing, you know. They're a bit tender, so we tend to put them in the greenhouse for the winter. But some, 
in the microclimates around the property after you've taken a photo to find out where there's no frost and it doesn't freeze you can put them there satsumas are good till nine below so that's pretty good you can graft some some citrus onto a satsuma stalk it's really good and these are all citrus and these are little gadgets that a guy can use to help himself with lighting and and these are just different uh, this was all built from um, from recycled material I, 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 I and this was painted by uh, friends from Oak Bay Fine Arts School they came over and painted all the flowers on it and sometimes there's there's actually there's hummingbirds come in here and they they think that's real flowers and it's just funny to see it's great fun so that's it and that's a couple three years old now and it's held together and it was built from nothing absolutely scratch and it was all gathered up from neighbors and friends and a couple things I bought but not too much this is a rose that we just cloned this is the this is another rose that we've cloned also you may have seen it a few seconds ago in the video this is a Fritz plum that's just what we call it it's a yellow plum very sweet and then the grapes grow up it as a natural arbor so we don't have to build arbors and then again you get to see this when there's no leaves on the tree so you get really get to see everything when this is all growing in it's it's quite the forest you don't see much at all and these are all in bloom and here we go this is an edible rose roses are edible there's another edible rose all roses are edible just be careful of the seeds inside they have little glochids on it and get caught in your throat here's a peach tree I grew from a pit and uh, now it's in its fifth year and look at that it's flowering this year this is a we should be getting some peaches this year it's a beautiful beautiful flower but I ate this peach and uh, and I grew it because I like the peach and that's what we do here yep and then we grew some apricots from pets when you're opening up the gene pool you don't know what you're going to get though it could be a great eating apricot or peach or apple or whatever or cherry or it could be one that, that the birds like to eat so we don't really care and this is a nice apricot she's just starting to flower beautiful there's another apricot these are all grown from pits and you, you have to read and this is an autumn olive my friend Stefan gave to me he's from Switzerland and I met him a couple of seasons ago at CD Saturday and this is his gift to me I gave him some goji berries and this is Peggy this is cherry tree it was a lady I looked after and and uh, it reminds me of her a nice lady. It's, I think it's a Lapin cherry. I'm not sure though. We'll have to see. It's it's in its third or fourth year now, so we we we're gonna get some cherries on it. And this is lemon balm. Great tea, awesome awesome tea. And a blueberry bush just starting to bud and there's that peach tree again and moseying along here we go another blueberry bush and another blueberry bush and here we go some blooms on the Fritz plum with the grape growing up as a natural arbor here's another grape that's growing up well this is uh, on the fence there and there's an apple tree onto the fence and another apple tree beside it I just grow them along the fence with the with the grapes growing along the apple tree and and it, you don't even see the fence too much once it's Everything's growing in with leaves. This is a crab apple tree. I liked it. It was from Tony from his nursery. A guy that had a nursery down the road years ago. And um, 
And here's an Italian plum. It's from my sister's place. It was some plums that grew there. I like them, so I brought them home to the food forest. And this is jasmine, and this is the neighbor's veggie garden growing in here. And this is apple that's grown like a spellier through the fence and then it's this is the neighbor they they're imitating the food forest somewhat and uh, they grow they grow quite a bit of food in that little patch believe it or not and here this is a clone I made from thorn from thornless uh, blackberry and you just cut it on the node and buried it underground with some rooting hormone and have one node above the ground and it'll grow you do it in the spring and uh, now, oh, and here's some oka, and that's a that's an artichoke. It's a it's a beautiful artichoke. It's very tasty. And here's another one here. We'll bury them back up. There we go. And this one is the Canadian artichoke, and uh, it's a lovely eating. You boil that for 15 minutes and dip it in butter, and you're in heaven. There you go. nice and buried back up just a little bit underneath the soil and off we go to the next here we go here's a lemon tree that's been out all, all over the entire winter can you believe that in a strawberry bush and an apple tree it was all in the same bucket so i planted it there and uh, that was in in early spring and now or, or early fall and then it went over the whole winter and it survived <laughs> Now it's an early spring. So there, you know, when you open up the gene pool, you will find some that can take a bit of cold. And some that can't, they'll just die. And that's happened a few times, more often than not. But you do get your one out of every so many that will make it. And uh, they thrive. And uh, so over here is a, a cherry tree. This is, uh, this is my cherry tree for my friend Yoko and Frankie. They gave me this cherry tree, and and it should produce cherries this year. It's a couple, three years old now, so it's been planted here for a while, and it does grow some every year. I have to spray it for aphids once in a while, some mild soap and water, and sometimes we bring in ladybugs too. We put in a few thousand ladybugs last year that seemed to clear up any aphids and biter eggs and whatnot. This is a tayberry and thornless blackberry. And that's a tayberry there in Point Nat. And, and there's a the thornless blackberry. So you can pick your blackberries and not have your thorns in your fingers. It's, it, that's really a pleasure. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, there we go. We're going to mosey along here. And, and there. I'm going to go over here and look at this this is a Johnny Gold Apple from Mitchell's farm I grew it from a seed and uh, I've talked to old man Mitchell a few times about this and trying to get him over here to have a look and uh, one day he says he is gonna come over and see it got quite a few of them actually and uh, I just did a pruning on this and took some off there was quite a bit down below if not necessary water sprout suckers like and stuff and, whatnot but uh, yeah and here's a row of blueberries they're about five years old now and they get heavily loaded and here's a goji no this is a plum this is a this is a plum tree that I liked and that I ate I ate the plum and then I just started growing it you have to score the the, the pit like you have to replace the boar or the pig from the wild that scored it with their teeth you have to scrape it on the cement or something rough until you've worn a hole in it these are blueberries here these are nice blueberries these are dukes patriots and uh and uh darrows yeah and uh there's some more there's some blossoms there this blueberry blossoms are just coming out now awesome and there we go and then there's some comfrey try to put comfrey here and there beside trees they're nitrogen fixers, they really pull out minerals from the ground, they have vast root systems. And uh, yeah, there's another, another goji. 
Oh, there's the blueberries. There we go. There more blueberries flowering. Yeah, it's early March. It's really uh, something to see this time of year. There's some more gojis. And uh, butterfly bush. And there's some more goji. Just planted a made clones last year, a few hundred. Sold a bunch, gave a bunch away, planted a bunch here and there. Really great food. The leaves are good in salad. Leaves are good for soup base, and the berry is a superfood. Can't go wrong with that. This is a plum tree. Love all different kinds of plums. You want to have an early plum, a midsummer plum, and a late summer plum. Same with apples and any type of fruit like that. So you always have a continuous supply. Yep, look at that, hey? Wow. Just love plums. And along here, that's a row of raspberries along the fence here. You won't be able to see the fence or any of these places once it starts growing in. These are all raspberries. Try to make it look like a real forest when you're this is the neighbor's yard. He's put in quite a few blueberries and plum trees, cherry trees I've given him. and They're trying and they have some little dudes there and they really like it. They, we give them lots of berries. They call it Howie Berries. <laughs> they're quite cute. So here we go. Here's some more. Put in some more strawberries. Some plums edible magnolias and this is the the walk pathways that you fill in with your kitchen compost and your lawn clippings and your and your coffee grounds from Starbucks and your wood chips from the wood companies they bring it all for free and or you can go and get it this is a Fritz plum that's been pruned up with chop and drop you, you clean it up and that way when you see the other videos, uh, you can see how much it's grown in. This is the version where it's all cleaned up with the chop and drop program. This is a mushroom that grows natural here. I'm not too much into mycology myself, but I know a little bit about the mycelios, that the super highway of nutrient delivery. I know a little bit about it. And that's a doggy dung there, and there's a mushroom there, some type of peach like mushroom I suppose I, I, I don't I should study it more oh there's some doggy dung we call them doggy flowers and uh, they should be buried up soon and here's an edible tree rose yep and this is more raspberries they grow all along here just tons and tons and tons of raspberries and this is the canopy above us and there, there's gojis, or not gojis, but uh, kiwis that grow up into this, and edible vine roses and such like that. And you can see on here the kiwi growing up the vine rose. Well, we kind of went by it. Here we go. There it is there in front of you. You can see it where I'm pointing at it with my finger. That's the kiwi growing up the vine rose. And then there's wisteria there. And this goes up into the Fritz plum and creates a forest canopy and uh, it gets really thick and bushy in here in the pretty quick as soon as everything starts growing but then it's a chop and drop in the fall this is the beginning of the very beginning of the year this is a this is a fig and I made lots of figs on oh, there's some on there that we'll get those early this year lots of figs they like really poor ground they don't like really rich ground and uh, they have a tap root, so dig a large hole down as far as you can. And that's a goji, a full grown goji. Oh gee, I'm gonna eat some, here we go. Pull some off there, and there, I'm gonna eat that. It tastes great. Uh, that's a big goji bush. 
All right, gonna eat some more. Gonna tear some off and eat some more. Boy, oh boy. Good eats. Here we go. And more. I'm gonna tear that off there and it's gone. That's good eating. New ones. Oh, I'm gonna eat some more. Won't be much of the goji bush left. <laughs> Keep eating. <laughs> the strawberry bed with Oh yeah, this is Mexican oregano. Just put that in several patches. Love it in my sauces, like tomato sauce. Oh, and this is Italian parsley. And uh, that's, here we go, what are we looking at? Oh yeah, that's fennel. Look like little Christmas trees. That's great eating with fish. And some rosemary. And a gooseberry to the right there. Oh, look at that rosemary. Gonna eat some. There we go. And there's Angelica. I just love Angelica. It's a big white sphere of a flower bulb on it. It's just wonderful to see. There's some poppies, some tulips, a little bit of everything in the forest floor. And back to the pathway where you build your soil bank. And over here, this crocosmia just popping through. We like it in a bucket because we can move it around in the garden and it attracts bees, butterflies, and it's great for hummingbirds. Here's our salad garden. This is where we get our salad in the evenings. Come on, cut it fresh. This has been there all over the winter. It's not, you know, it's early March right now. But this has been growing here all winter. And that's a remade covering my lemon tree. And as you can see, a lot of bark mulch. And this is more greens. More greens. And more greens. And that's some type of lettuce, very old lettuce. It was really tall, beautiful flowers. Swiss chard. Inside there is where the lemon tree is sitting. I wonder if we're going to have a look at it there. Let's have a look. Let's pull this apart. And let's see, there's our lemon tree. Oh, pretty rough in there. Look at that, protected all winter in there. Six footer. That looks nice. 